Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to be comparing the video autofocus system of the Canon 80D with their dual pixel autofocusing compared to the Sony a6500. Now, my channel has a ton of video autofocusing tests and comparisons, probably more so than any other channel. And I've actually never done this one here, and I get a lot of questions about it. So I'm glad I'm finally able to do it, and I'm able to do it thanks to Lumoid. They sent out this ADD for me to do this video, so big shout out to them. If you guys haven't heard of Lumoid, they're a camera rental house. They also rent drones and other electronics. Uh, but there's a couple interesting things with them. One huge thing is when you rent a piece of gear like a lens, 20% of that rental price goes back into credit for you to buy gear later. They sell gear as well. So that's really nice because a lot of times if I rent and then end up buying the same gear item, which is nice to rent and try before you buy, you feel like you lost some money. This way you're getting some credit back and at the end of the year after a few rentals, you can buy some gear. So that's very nice. Thank you to Lumoid. I've used their service multiple times before they sent this out. So um, I really like them. I'm glad they were, we were able to kind of partner up and do this. And I also have a coupon code that they gave me. Max Yuria 15 will get you 15% off on their order. So I'll have a link in the video description you guys could check out. The first thing we're going to do is test out a wedding processional um, type of a setup shot. So bright, harsh sunlight like I often get at weddings. Uh, you have bride or groom or um, you know other people coming down the aisle. And it's really difficult, especially at like an F1.8, to track them. It looks nice, but it's hard to keep up as they're walking. Sometimes they're speeding up, slowing down. And it's even harder now with these new electronic lenses. So here I have the 51.8 version 3 STM. So it is electronic, harder to manual focus, but better for video. And I have the 51.8 OSS on the A6500. So cameras nowadays, good ones like these two systems can do a better job than I can. So I like to use the right tool for the job. So let's go ahead and test this out. I have it framed uh, as best and as close as I can. Of course, this has slightly more crop factor. So I have the Sony a little bit in front of it. And let's see how they compare using face tracking. All right, so we're using face tracking and I have them set to standard. So like the Sony can change up the responsiveness. I'm shooting 4K, which the autofocusing is slightly worse than in 1080p, but that's how I shoot it. So that's what I want to test. Of course, here we're shooting 1080p and both using face tracking. All right, Vadim, go ahead and just walk normal pace. Okay, we're shooting F1.8. Um, high shutter speed, of course, sorry about that, but I don't have the matching NDs for both of these. So, all right, round two, go ahead and try that again. So the only, the Sony only picked up your face at that point, whereas the Canon saw it at the full distance. So I'll look at the camera and then crouch down. Make a face when I get up. All right, and get into frame. Crouch down. And get up. So a camera could do a great job in video autofocusing outside or in good lighting conditions, but if it can't do a good job in low light, then that's another story. So that's exactly what we're gonna test right now. So we moved the whole setup indoors. We're gonna test the same type of thing, like a processional in a dimly lit room. Here we're at F1.8 150th ISO 1600. I do have the bathroom light on and some lights out there that are dimmed. We're gonna go ahead and shut this light off and we're gonna go ahead and see how well they do. Once again, we're using face tracking autofocus. Go ahead. Now walk forward again. and go up. All right guys, so the next thing we're gonna test is the touch to focus with the touch screen. We're at 150th, 1.8 ISO 100, and I have uh, a camera close to me, and then I have another one further away. So this is pretty close to the minimal focusing distance, uh, but of course we're further than that. And let's see how responsive they are, and also um, how accurate and how much pulsing we get when we're touching the focus between the objects. So starting off with the A6500, and this lens, the, you know, if the 50s are cheap, this lens here, it's known to have some focus breathing, so you guys will notice that. Uh, but I'm tapping on it, and I'm not seeing, I'm seeing a little bit of pulsing on the closer one. The further one, I'm not seeing that. So it's working quite well. 
let's switch over to the ADD. All right, we have the ADD. I actually moved it back slightly to get a similar framing. And let's go ahead and hit record here. It's doing a great job. There's a little bit of a hesitation when I press down on the further one, but you can actually tweak the responsiveness in the camera as well, just like on the Sony, if you want to bring that up. It's interesting, the one that's closer, it's actually starting to grab on right away, whereas the one in the back about half a second before it switches over. Uh, but yeah, it's doing an awesome job. And here, of course, we're using the single point touch. Now, the last thing we're gonna test out is a slider shot with a punch in. And this is a really nice shot that I like doing with uh, shooting B-roll, but it's very difficult to do if you're manual focusing because you're trying to do a smooth slide, trying to focus, pull evenly and smoothly and keep the object in focus. So a video autofocusing system is really helpful for this type of a shot. So we're doing a nice, smooth punch in. And this thing is tracking great. That was awesome. Looked like it was in focus the whole time. And now let's try to do a shot going out. Awesome. And once again, that's a F1.8. So it did great. I'm gonna switch over to the Sony. All right, so we're using wide autofocus, so the camera is choosing what to focus on by itself. I think I'm going a little bit faster than the Canon. But from what I could see on the rear screen, it looks to be pretty, pretty in focus. These rear LCDs aren't great on the Sonys. Okay. And going backwards. It looks like it did a great job too, and I've done this type of a shot you know, multiple times with the Sony systems and they typically do awesome. All right guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and let me know which camera do you think did better or if one camera did better in a certain scenario than the other, let me know in the comment section below what camera is better for what. Uh, both these systems, video autofocus wise, do a great job and they're good enough for us to use now out in the field and they're good enough for us to actually trust them and in certain scenarios like a professional, they could do a better job than even a good camera operator. So I'm really glad we have systems like these. A couple things I did notice while shooting other than video autofocusing is uh, the rear LCD screen on these cans is much better. Of course they have the really nice touch interface where you can access everything. That was nice. Uh, the Sony, the rear LCD is not very good, very reflective, very dim, but it also has the EVF which is nice to use when you're shooting outside and it also has zebras which is nice for exposing which you do not get here. So if you guys notice any other image differences you guys can point those out as well. Of course one is 4k and one is 1080p. Once again, a big thank you to Lumoid for sending out this ADD for us to play with and test out. If you guys want to rent from them, use the code MAXYERIA15 for 15% off. Keep in mind, 20% of your rental actually stays with you for future purchases, so that's very nice to have. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. A big shout out to all the patrons who, for a few bucks a month, support our channel. If you guys are interested and you guys enjoy our videos, please check out the link in the video description and in the comments below to our Patreon page. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.